My name is Oliver James. I'm a predominantly a breath worker, but I also do body-led psychotherapy, um, Pilates, and a type of healing called theta healing. I won't claim to do a type of breath work. So there are, there are many types. You've got transformational breath, um, holotropic breath, uh, quantum light breath, all these amazing breaths that are out there. And, and I recommend everyone goes and tries them. I've tried uh, I've tried a lot of them, and they all do different things, different experiences. Um, going into the breath, I think something, or I am a particular way, and coming out of it, something something might be changed. So one one of the things that that changes is um, so I spoke a lot about trauma. Um, breath work, or breath in general, works on three levels. Um, we have the brainstem, which is right at the back, and that's what I'd call the very sort of primal part of us. If we were to um, be brain dead or be asleep, um, you may not have been aware of your breathing up until I've just talked about breathing, so now you're aware of it. What is it that's controlling your breath? That, that's the brainstem, and, and that will naturally just breathe for you and ensuring that you, you survive. Um, then we've got our limbic system, which is in the middle of the brain, so that's the emotions, and breath is affected by our emotions. If I'm sad, the breath gets held a particular way. If I'm angry, it's kind of forced. If I'm very happy, it's very flowing. If I'm very depressed, it's very sort of low and, and, uh, and small. Um, so through my emotion, my breath has changed, and I'll come on to that in a second. And then the last bit is the um, prefrontal cortex, which is at the front. And that is the part of us that knows, that has information. So I am sad about my dog that died. But hold on, I know my dog died two years ago. Um, so now I, I've processed it. And though this is coming up again for me, I've got the sadness. I'm aware that this happened quite a while ago. So I am come to terms with it more quickly this time maybe. Um, if I'm scared of a snake, it knows the snake's behind the glass. That's what the prefrontal cortex is interesting about. So, breath is fascinating over perhaps any other modality, from talking therapies to movement to art therapy. Um, uh, and singing's an interesting one. Um, I think that relates closer to breath. The breath, because it can be changed or altered with those three parts of us, our emotions, our uh, control or knowledge centers, and also primarily when you get into a breathing pattern and you consciously choose to do it, you start affecting all of those different areas. And so how I think can be changed, how I naturally move can be changed just through breath, and um, my emotional state can be changed. So where my emotions suddenly I'm very sad, there's breath work that can induce different uh, feelings into, uh, into a situation. So I can, um, it's what I call polar breaths, the polar opposites. With clients I like to explore just a breath and they, they shut their eyes and they're working out um, any, any breath that you can do. So let's say uh, a hyperventilative breath, so a sort of just get them to do it for about a minute, and then we're interested, what memory does that bring up? And um, so a lot of people have memories of, oh, they were at school, or da da da, how did that leave them feeling? So suddenly we have this breath, it has a particular feeling, and then we're wondering, what is the opposite of that feeling? What is the polar of that breath? And then we go into, we just think the other emotion, and we wait for that breath to come out. And suddenly we have these spectrum of breaths, and this becomes a tool that we can use in any aspect of, of life. I suddenly feel very stressed, but I know uh, the breath pattern for feeling calm or um, uh, for that beautiful moment on the beach back in Bali or whatever. I can remember it and I can impart that breath, so I can change um, how I'm feeling. And not only does it change how I feel, feelings affect the chemical system in my body, so I can change the chemical composition in my body. Um, and as all these changes start happening, I can change the neurological feedback. My brain and body start operating in a different way. Through this, um, through this paradigm, I have 
uh, the capability to change, in my belief, any aspect of the, of the human experience. The question is, do I want to? You know, it, it, I'm breathing and I'm sad and I'd rather not be sad, I'd rather be happy. But um, the, the idea of, of what happiness is and start exploring that, that's where this, I guess the psychotherapy side of it comes in. What is it to be happy and what is happiness? Um, it, is sadness the opposite of happiness? Like I said, there's many people that do different types of breaths and I recommend trying them all. Um, those different types of breaths, I, I do do them, I work, I work with them, but my interest lies in meeting the individual and in their body, in, and we spoke about this, or I spoke about this earlier, in their um, physicality is their history, is the story of their life, and, and that story is written in their breath, when they breathe very up, that says something. If the, the ribs are completely flared and, um, and you see what's got like a bulging in the solar plexus, that's information. So I like to just look at the person and observe them and give them a moment to observe themselves. And then what they notice and what comes up for them, um, what comes up for them in their own consciousness, um, working with that, that seems to be a very organic way of um, operating and, and working with breath because the body and the mind, or I guess the subconscious, it, it knows what it wants to do. It either wants to make us feel better or bring some balance into our system and we tend to get in the way. We get in the way by um, avoiding our problems, just watching TV instead or um, taking medication. So I'd, I'm feeling very anxious, I can take medication. Oh no, I don't feel anxious. The anxiety hasn't gone anywhere. You've just changed the, the chemicals in your, um, in your blood and in your brain so that you're not uh, you're not able to process the, the, the correct chemicals to feel anxiety anymore. That anxiety is still in the system. So um, the opportunity within something like breath is to, because we know we can change things, to go there, go where it may be difficult, um, go into the anxiety and, um, and know that we can stay present with it and focus on breath as, as we have it, as we are experiencing it, and at that moment something very beautiful happens, um, or, or can happen, I think that's where the support of the, the breath worker is, is important. Um, that as I go into the anxiety, I'm also aware of the breath, and I, um, and I split, the, where normally I would just be anxious, suddenly I'm anxious and I'm aware, and with the moment that that happens, um, we can teach the system, oh look, I'm, I'm anxious but I'm surviving, I'm okay. And the, the neurons, the, the, the signals that your brain and the body start receiving uh, start changing. They start understanding, I'm okay, I can handle this. And then what it was that was the issue is less of an issue now. And um, so for me that's where breathwork is very exciting. How to support people with trauma and trauma release. Um, and th there's, there's breaths to stimulate different parts of the brain for focus, so if you are, for example, uh, about to go into a meeting or you have an exam and our brain waves are, are kind of going in a very um, jagged or um, ununiform way, there's breathing that we can do that can change the heart rate and change the brain waves, so we go from this to a, a more undulating um, uh, the brainwave that we need to recall information, um, to calm our system down, go from a fight or flight down to more of a parasympathetic response. Um, so that's the sort of work that I enjoy doing, working with businesses. Um, I go into schools at the moment and just showing the, uh, right now it's teenagers, showing them that they have all the information that they need within them the body knows what it needs to do, we just get in the way of it and um, showing them just a very simple breathing technique, how they can use that to change perhaps any aspect of their life from uh, not only, you know, we, we know breath is great for anxiety and stress and getting to sleep and pain management, but where, for me, where the frontiers are, are changing or interacting with an environment. So how can I use my breath to calm you down? How can I use my breath to um, 
help my child go to sleep. If I start impacting my system, science shows that uh, we even have the technology now that can prove that, that my nervous system can affect someone else's nervous system. So um, it, I have this, this vision that um, police stations and the army and, uh, and politicians will be knocking on a breath worker's door um, to say, you're saying that we can, we can support people to calm down. Is it possible for, you, for us to use uh, breath within a riot situation? And rather than the riot police coming in with all their big armor, it's not that we've removed that, but if you got the whole row of them to breathe in uniform um, and, and uniformity, and you had this wall of breath happening, the people in front of it could not help but be impacted by this kind of expansion and contraction and uh, and I feel that we can avoid a lot of the chaos um, and the, the confusion and the destruction that's happening by just changing breath and it may sound a little bit extreme um, but but I believe it to be possible and, and I think we'll see things like this coming into play teachers using breath to, um, to calm a class down to uh, rather than sort of react to what's happening. Uh, it gets complicated with something like teachers, even with, um, with rioting. Um, if we see everything as energy, when, when the kids are very um, uh, energetic and, and loud and we say, be quiet, uh, sit down, we've actually just stimulated their system more. So we need to kind of rise them up a little bit and get them, get them to the different breath works and, and voice work that can be used to use, spend that energy, literally over about a five or 10 second period, and then a, a calming breath to, to bring them back down. And, uh, and I've seen it work very quickly, um, where a class is all, uh, and suddenly it's all quiet. And I remember doing one a while ago, about half an hour later, all the kids were sat on the floor with their eyes shut, just breathing, and the teacher looked at me, and she was like, <laughs> and it was like, this isn't magic, this is, uh, this is biology. This is um, this is uh, this is what humans are capable of. We're just disconnected from it. Um, so for me, breath is about reconnecting to my technology uh, as a human being. What what have, what have I missed, um, and what what are we missing? So obviously, the government and people are very much. Well, we've got the NHS and we take, we, if we've got this problem, we take painkillers and mm. a lot of people might find it difficult to think, oh, actually just my breathing and how I breathe yeah. can change mental and physical problems. And kind of what's your view on that? Um, um, so that is the million dollar question. So the easy way to, to talk about that is I, um, my parents, uh, are very much on the national health system and they take a lot of medication. They're also aware of these breathing techniques and I have a breath group every Tuesday, they're invited, they come. My mum has something called labyrinthitis and when she gets an attack, um, she'll pop some, some, some pills, I can't remember the medication of it, and it makes her feel better or at least she calms down and then, um, and then that works for her. Having done the breath work, she's now interested in that. So she's coming in and, um, and she'll come when, when attacks happen, happening. Ollie, can you please help me with the breath? And we'll sit down and do some breath work. Within about five or ten minutes, her system's calmed down and suddenly she doesn't need the medication. She enjoys it. Um, obviously, she's off running again and gets stressed and probably that labyrinthitis is going to come back. Um, and where I'm going with this is they know there's, there's breath to help them, but then they're not doing it. And they would rather pop the pill. They would rather um, take uh, something to lower blood pressure, um, to lower their cholesterol, rather than eat a diet that would lower their cholesterol themselves. So I think we've got so used to um, what I'd call the sort of McDonald's of life, the, the takeaway, the let's speed this up, let's get things done. Um, and so, in my work, in, in, uh, in anything like this, I can't help someone like that um, if they can't help themselves. 
and and I'll be very clear about that. You know, with with my parents, for example, my mum will come in and, and say, "Oh, could you?" and I'm, and and I I help, but I'm also quite honest in terms of I don't think I can help you with this because you are unwilling to make any changes for yourself, and and therefore there's only so much that that breath can do if you don't want to do it. Um, you know, this isn't, it's not a, a pill that you can take, that you can just be unconsciously um, removing that negative symptom um, in some way. But with everything there are side effects, and I think it's when we realize that um, a lot of the medication we take, if you look at the top 10 um, prescribed medications uh, in the world, seven of them are preventable illnesses. And um, that, that's just shocking to me. It makes me quite angry that we have a health system that knows that these health issues are preventable. But I think they feel at a loss. I don't think people seem interested in um, doing the exercise, eating better, um, improving their circulation, uh, helping their... Um, sort of clearing a lot of the, the, the crap from their life that means that they've got to take these medications. And um, so what is the answer? I, I, I don't think that there is one other than, and this is, this is where I said uh, at the beginning of the interview, we need to hit the edge. Each person needs to hit it in their own time. And um, for my parents, when, when they hit it, they come and they, they come and do breath work and then uh, that's two, three weeks, they're in a good place, and suddenly their life's changing, diet's changing, they're going to the gym, and then it gets difficult again, and they go back, and, and that's just their, their cycle. And um, so I think the excitement for me is around what is going to be the, the edge for, for society itself. What is going to, to shake the national health system so much that it can't continue making these decisions that it's making. Um, when is it that we know that if, if a doctor says, don't worry, I've got this, um, take this medication and let me do your blood pressure, come and see me next week. And then we tell everyone, oh, my doctor's helping me. The doctor seems to be in charge of, of my healing. We know that that is I don't know, maybe 50, 80% less effective for their own healing than if they made the decision, if they took control. Um, so at some point, um, my guess is the, the system will change. It's, it's too expensive. We've got an aging population. We can't continue as we are. Um, and uh, at some point, they're going to be looking at alternatives that are cost effective, that are... Um, fast acting and that everyone can do and um, for me that's something like breath you know teach teach someone probably three four breaths in particular and there's so much that could be resolved and that is free there is no cost attached to that and um, and I think things like the National Health Service they can really focus their attention on what is needed there are things that breath can't help with there's um, certain surgeries um, emergency situations, yeah, I mean, maybe breath isn't going to be uh, appropriate for that, but we're wasting so much time, so much money, so many resources on things that are preventable. I'm worried about why, we're, why are we doing this? Why, who is it that's getting paid to make the decisions that it's okay that um, people get um, larger, that we get unhealthier, um, moving worse, uh, something I've really noticed in, I've worked in a few schools, the problems are already there, I can see it in their bodies as they're walking, in their posture. Um, we're, we're creating a, a generation that's, that's going to fall apart more and more and more, so we're going to hit that edge. And, uh, and I, um, I hope that people can see it before they do, um, but if they don't, then um, you know, you know where I am, you know where the breath workers are, if you'd like to know the breath that can help with all these different things. So where do you see the future of your breath work going and other elements connected? Yeah, so not just breath work, but I think breath work is going to be very key, particularly because 
what I was talking about around the changing of all the systems in the body, from the, the primal system to the emotional system and also the, the, the prefrontal cortex, the, our control and our knowledge aspects. Um, the, for me, the future is very bright. Um, some of the stuff that I'm working on right now is around um, exploring uh, aging. It's very exciting. Um, there's been some evidence that it would be possible to to use breath work, not yes, use breath work to improve skin tone and um, and muscle development and circulation, all of that. That's and detoxification. That's all possible with breath work. Um, but for me, the the stuff that I'm really experimenting with at the moment is is it possible to um, to connect with the parts of myself that could change more serious aspects of myself from uh, maybe perhaps slowing aging, changing my physical structure, is that possible? Um, I've experimented with changing hair colour and, and things like that which um, th I mean there's no evidence to suggest that, that it's been possible um, other than uh, yeah it's not something I'm, I won't go into too much detail but there is evidence to suggest that, that it may, may be possible to um, to slow things like aging process and and for me uh, when asked what do we think the future is going to be about as we enter this uh, a world where um, we're invited to go into much higher conscious uh, frameworks and exploring um, I believe it would be possible to explore more than this reality I mean uh, already we know there's more than than this realm that we're in uh, there are other um, there are other realms that are present we don't know how to communicate with them right now but I think through things like consciousness we may be able to um, and and I think I'm very excited of the what's possible when we start getting into um, alter reality or holographic reality, understanding the possibilities of changing things that are going on in my life, in, in the world, and with enough people working with enough consciousness, um, I think we're going to be seeing changes like we've never seen before. Um, and that for me is, is what gets me up in the morning. <laughs>